Hello and welcome to the Qubit Guy podcast, brought to you by Classic, the quantum algorithm design company. My name is Yuval, and my guest today is Vishal Shete, Director of Strategy and Product at Terra Quantum. Vishal and I spoke about why they chose to build their own quantum cloud, the kind of quantum solutions that are moving from prototype to production, and much more. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let us know how we did by emailing hello at classic.io. That's hello at classic.io. Hello, Vishal, and thanks for joining me today. Pleasure to be here, Eva. Great to have you. So who are you and what do you do? <laughs> well, um, I'm currently a uh, director of strategy at the quantum computing company or quantum technology company, Terra Quantum. Uh, yeah, I, I've been in the quantum world now for about three and a half years. Uh, it's been a fascinating journey. Tell me a little bit about Terra Quantum. Um, where are you based? How large are you? What do you do? Yeah, so Terra Quantum is a Swiss headquartered uh, quantum technology firm. Uh, so we're about 80 people, well, actually growing closer to 90 people uh, with offices in about six locations around the world. Um, what we do can really be summarized into kind of three things. We do, uh, we provide quantum algorithms and software as a service. We provide quantum computing systems as a service, and we provide quantum security as a service. Uh, and often we combine our algorithms part and our quantum systems part to provide end-to-end -end solutions uh, for customers at times. So what does that mean? So I am an enterprise and I want yeah. to get into quantum and I have an optimization problem or, or chemistry issue. I come yeah. to you. What can you do for me? Yeah. So if you already know the problem that you've got uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of what we look at quantum is problems that you've got that you want to solve better. Uh, either faster or get to a better answer, right? Uh, so if you want to, you know, go through one of those two routes, uh, we'll work with you to really understand where are your limitations today. We can help develop a algorithm uh, in, in our algorithms team. We, we have come some unique capabilities that develop a very uh, efficient use of quantum circuits. Uh, and we can develop these algorithms for you to solve your problem. And we can even execute it on our uh, kind of quantum hardware, uh, which is a combination of virtual and simulated hardware, as well as integrated with other uh, QPUs, quantum processing units within the system. So in, the, in essence, what we would do is solve a problem for you um, with the best capabilities that are existing today uh, in, in, I guess, the quantum and quantum inspired space. Let me play back what I heard. So I come to you with a problem. You guys have been doing this for a while. You've got 80 or 90 people. You've done optimization problems before. So you'll write code, quantum code for me that solves my problem after you understood the problem. And then you help me run it. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. And we'll also compare it uh, against the best, your best way of doing it. So what do you do in, you know, in, in your industry, in your business today? Uh, and what's the difference that we'll be able to deliver in terms of performance benefit, but importantly, in terms of a business benefit for you. Uh, so, you know, what does a better optimization, what does a better global minima mean for you from a, in, in business terms? Yeah. How does it work on an IP perspective? Do I get to keep the code that you write for me? Can I change it later? Do I have rights to it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's different ways in which we work with various customers. So um, at the most basic level, we've got our IP in terms of the core of the Terra Quantum IP in these kinds of instances is in kind of the algorithm development part. So we've got some key, some, some key components of optimization algorithms. One of them is what we call QENC, it's just quantum encoding. Uh, so that's our core IP. Uh, we customize that and apply that to your optimization problem. Uh, and we develop an end-to-end -end solution for you. And in addition to that, we've got our IP around, you know, the actual physical hardware and the execution environment that we run it on. Um, so in terms of the way we engage with customers, it's either a bespoke solution for them. Uh, so for customer X, we develop a bespoke solution where we hold kind of the core components of the IP, but we do the end-to-end -end solution and that's your solution. Uh, or we look at developing solutions with them that we take to market together. 
so we develop a solution for an industry problem that they are aware of, that we're aware of. And together with them, we take it to the rest of the industry as well. When you mention quantum systems, does that mean that you're hosting your own, that you have your own quantum cloud? Yeah, that's right. So we have a system called uh, QMware, uh, an entity called QMware, uh, which is our quantum cloud, essentially. Um, and so this quantum cloud uh, today is got a very unique positioning in the sense that it is in-memory computing with high-performance computing and virtual QPUs. So we've got 40 qubits, which we virtualize, uh, and we run that in a very tightly integrated way with really powerful, you know, best-in-class high-performance computing systems, uh, which we can deliver kind of end-to-end -end results for, for customers. Uh, but in addition to this, through this cloud, we'll also be able to integrate uh, quantum processes as they mature, and we, are, we, we, we do integrate quantum processes today, and uh, we'll be able to execute uh, algorithms and programs on this cloud powered by the most powerful quantum systems when they're of a size available to create enough performance advantage. So in the sense that customers, they develop their program or algorithm once with us, and that's it. Uh, we do kind of, you know, from there, uh, as the hardware matures, we kind of take care of it from, from, from that point onwards. I find that really interesting. How does a hundred person company reach the conclusion that it needs its own cloud as opposed to, hey, Mr. Customer, we can work on Azure, we can work on AWS uh, Bracket, we can work on IBM. Why yeah. do you need your own cloud? So to be clear, we're not tied to our own cloud. <laughs> that is one option for, for executing uh, customer, like a one option, one platform for executing algorithms that we develop. Uh, the reason we developed this is because of, uh, so QMware was developed as a joint venture between Terra Quantum and another company called Navarian, uh, which has got a pretty uh, long and well-established history in, uh, in Europe, especially around high performance computing. Um, and the reason we developed this cloud is because we saw a gap in the market for really well integrated uh, virtual QPUs uh, or QPUs and quantum processing units in general with high performance computing. So the in-memory compute layer that we have uh, that kind of integrates these two components together is really quite unique. Uh, and it's not something we can, uh, we can achieve or anyone one can achieve uh, through, through other environments. So um, that's kind of what gives us a unique advantage. But uh, as I said, we're, we do work with the rest of the ecosystem a lot and we're happy to, do, to continue doing that, yeah. May I ask what types of quantum processing units you have in your cloud? So we've got this, uh, the virtual QPU, which is, uh, which is 40, uh, 40 qubits, which is, you know, 40 qubits, which are, let's say, noiseless uh, and because they're virtualized and fully interconnected, right? Like, so, which is, which is immensely powerful. Uh, so 40 log logical qubits, which is, which is quite powerful. Um, so in addition to that, we work with, you know, the superconducting systems and some of the quantum annealing systems that, that exist uh, and, and we can execute on those as well. What are the main types of problems? We spoke a little bit about optimization, but what yeah. other problems do customers come to you with? Yeah, so, so optimization problems is a big part of it. So essentially, there's kind of three, three areas uh, that we see. So optimization, machine learning, and simulation. Uh, so optimization problems are, are quite, quite uh, unique and actually quite well uh, suited to pretty much every, every industry. Um, and... I guess what we do differently in the optimization space is we're not limited by, um, by a Cubo standard, which a lot of people are, in which you have to be limited to binary variables or binary type problems. And you have to then you know, discretize what is you know, essentially a, a, a continuous problem and so on. Uh, but we're able to deal with a large kind of set of variables and we're able to deal with a large type of variables um, in, in the optimization space, which gives us a lot of capability in, in addressing different types of optimization challenges. Um, but in addition to that, we've got uh, machine, le machine learning problems where uh, through a hybrid neural network, we kind of speed up uh, the, way we, the way in which we you know, help train our models um, and compared to classical approaches, but also improve the accuracy um, of, of our predictions. Uh, and simulation where we speed up uh, things like, you know, speed up, 
uh, simulation systems, simulation of various systems. Um, so relevant for spaces around computational fluid dynamics or around um, e even the Black-Scholes model in, in finance and things. So uh, relevant for partial differential equations um, in, in different contexts. Very interesting. Um, when you think about the, your customer base, how much of it is exploratory? We're just getting into quantum. We'd like to compare the performance of the quantum system with the classical system. And how much of it is in production? I have a quantum solution that I didn't have before, and now it's running and it's part of my production operations. Yeah, that's a really interesting question, right? Like, so, I mean, because we're, we're kind of uh, very much set on this hybrid framework and on doing the best that we can with virtualized qubits and high performance computing and stuff, what we've noticed is there are some instances where we can create performance, which can't be achieved otherwise. That actually allows us to productionize solutions at large scale, especially with the algorithms that we've got. Um, so there are like, um, I'd say about, uh, 20, 20 to 30% of what we do is actually building that production, you know, moving beyond a POC into a production uh, production build. Uh, whereas the rest of it is, uh, you know, working with a view of doing, working on a POC with a view of taking it into production. Uh, so I, I'd say there's a, there's a big drive to not just <laughs> do toy problems uh, and not just do a problem that, you know, we can then, uh, you know, do a press release about or whatever, uh, and say, okay, organization XYZ is now in quantum because we did a POC. We actually want to do something real and tangible with a near term, as near a term impact as we can create with whatever kind of um, structures that we have. Are you able to share names of customers that you have quantum solution, that you've built quantum solutions for that are in production? Uh, I'm not able to share names of customers, but I can give you some color on the types of customers that we work with. Uh, so in the investment banking space, um, we have a we have solutions around a particular problem called collateral optimization. Um, so this is one of my favorite uh, moments in quantum came in the collateral optimization space because it's really relevant for any trading function uh, where any anyone that has a margin requirement that needs to be met has needs to manage the amount of collateral and what collateral they need to post to meet that margin requirement. Uh, so what we do is optimize the way in which you meet your margin requirements in the cheapest way possible for an investment bank or a trading trading function that may not be in a bank. Uh, why it's really exciting is because you, with the solution, we move away from just talking to the quantum team and quantum experts, which we do, of course. Uh, but in addition to those, we're talking about we're talking to and, and implementing solutions with heads of trading heads of liquidity, heads of capital uh, at really kind of global investment banks. One of them is about 400 billion in terms of collateral that they manage, right? Uh, and so that's, that's really quite exciting because those people don't really care whether you're executing it on, you know, on your calculator or whether you're using a quantum system. Uh, they, they care about the output that you get for them. So uh, they're, they're quite an interesting bunch to work with and very impatient as, you know, most trading uh, people in investment banks tend to be, yeah. Is it a time-sensitive application? Do they need responses within seconds or less than that? So, no. Uh, so this is not one of those where uh, speeding, it, speeding it up much faster will create a better value. Uh, it's one of those where, because it's done typically once a day, when you look at everything that you have to post to and try and find an optimal solution for it. So it's done once a day uh, and it takes about an hour today um, in terms of processing time to do it. So the value really is in finding a better answer rather than finding the same answer faster, uh, which, is, uh, which, is what we, which is what we're able to demonstrate, which is yeah, highly exciting. Roughly how long has it been running in production? So we're, to be clear, we're, we're implementing it in production now. So it should be in production in the coming months, but um, uh, yeah, so it's, we've been working with um, customers. The first POC was done at some point last year, uh, and, and that's kind of been the journey since, uh, since then, yeah. You mentioned that you guys are 80 people growing to 90. I would assume that most of them are engineers. Yeah. Um, and so you have many, many years of experience working on quantum systems. What would you like to see hardware-wise or software-wise to make your job's easier. Yeah. 
So <laughs> it's a very interesting question. I think for us, what would be you know, one of the key things that we need to solve from a hardware perspective is if we can get to a better quality of qubit, right? So um, once we can do that, I think that is, that is hugely powerful. I think more than the number, I think the quality um, and you know, the quality and the interconnectedness of qubits within different systems is super important for us. So for example, we're working with 40, 40 logical qubits, which are fully interconnected. Now, getting to that stage in a real system um, is, is going to be great. Uh, and, and getting beyond that, it'll be, will be hugely, uh, hugely powerful. I know others have got, you know, in, in the uh, more than that in terms of physical qubits, but when you look at logical qubits, um, it's, it's a much smaller, uh, much smaller uh, set to that. So um, error correction and kind of managing the noise within qubits is a hugely important task in the whole, in the whole space, I think. You probably speak with a lot of corporate customers um, about quantum. Do you think the industry as a whole is overselling the capabilities of quantum today? Or maybe it's underselling and actually you can do all these wonderful things right now and corporations are just not aware of it? Um, I think there's, there, there's a huge potential in this space, um, you know, as many people who are listening to this are probably uh, well aware of. Now, I think the problem in terms of how it's communicated to the corporate customers is that it's not quite communicated in the right language. Um, so making it more operational, more kind of tangible, more, uh, more concrete in terms of having a clear use case and application view uh, is, is, is quite important. And I think we're moving towards that a little bit, but I think there's still some, some way to go. Uh, where, and in my view, you get to a world where you're talking less about, you know, when you're talking to customers, you're talking less about qubits and, and, and uh, you know, different types of algorithms that you're using, but more in terms of outcome and achieve, outcomes that you're achieving for them. And then that's where I think, you know, the, the industry should evolve, where companies are now focused on solving particular applications and use cases and creating value in this particular space as opposed to being a quantum company, which is such a broad thing. <laughs> and thus, if I try to paraphrase what I heard from you, and maybe I do it clumsily, you would go to a customer and say, we harness the power of quantum computing to give you a better collateral analysis solution. Exactly. Is that about right? Exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in your view, what would help accelerate the adoption of quantum tech uh, with corporations? So, uh, so it's pretty much that, right? Like it's pretty much being able to be um, concrete about this and being able to uh, kind of translate the value that can be derived through this in a way that people can understand. But also I think, um, you know, on a more sort of technical note, I think it's important for us to be able to uh, continue working with the best uh, in class uh, HPC solutions and that that exist. You know, HPC. When I say HPC, it's kind of a broad bracket, including FPGAs and GPUs and, and everything else, right? Like figuring out how we can work um, in the best way in integrated environments with all these things together is is super super important. So um, I think those two things. I'd say integrating with the best of what we've got today and communicating the value in a in a way that can be understood easily. As we get close to the end of our conversations, I just want to revisit a point that we discussed earlier in about your private quantum cloud. Um, yes. Do you expect to continue to do that? Or do you estimate that in two or three years, there are just going to be clouds from the major vendors that are going to be good enough and, and you'll abandon your private cloud effort? No, we definitely expect to continue to do that. Uh, we expect to continue to to building uh, to build build our cloud, um, and uh, you know we potentially will engage, will will integrate with some of the other vendors as well, right? Like so, uh, have our cloud accessible through through other uh, clouds that exist, um, and 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 vice versa. So that I think um, could could uh, could be a path that could be quite interesting. Actually, one point I, I would like to, uh, I, I know we're kind of coming up to the wrap up, but one point I'd like to 
uh, just kind of touch on uh, quite quickly is our our work in the quantum key distribution space, uh, which has actually got quite a um, quite a bit of coverage in in uh, some of the major media um, outlets, which is <laughs> uh, tremendously exciting because um, actually, firstly, I think um, quantum, along with the optimization space, my view is uh, that quantum key distribution and quantum security is one of the earliest real world and large scale applications uh, of quantum technologies that, that exist. Um, and what our scientists have been able to do is uh, develop a quantum key distribution protocol, uh, which is not dependent on new quantum infrastructure in the telco system, right? So which means we can have long distance quantum secure quantum key distribution up to 40,000 kilometers, which is, which is huge because uh, that allows you to set up a full, full network without having to you know, re-engineer existing infrastructure, which is, yeah, which is, so that's, a, that's another big project that we're looking, that we're working on with several customers on. Thank you very much for bringing that up. So when you look at quantum algorithms as a quantum software, quantum systems, and quantum security as a service, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you to learn more about your work? So best way is easiest way, I'd say two things, either get in touch with me on LinkedIn or uh, drop me a line at vishal at terraquantum.swiss. Uh, happy to have a discussion with uh, any interested parties. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Vishal, for coming on the program today. Thank you, Yuval. Been a pleasure.